Alrighty guys, now I just wanted to give you guys a, a nice handy tip. Um, now, if you watch my lithium setup in regards to all my battery and solar and everything like that, then you're all above board and know what I'm talking about. But if you're not, then make sure you watch that video. Um, but I'm going to be talking about my inverter. And I'm going to be talking to you about how you can trick your van into thinking that it's on a mains power and you can use your inverter to do that and power all your sockets in your caravan so you don't have to worry about putting an extension lead here an extension lead there so um, it makes it a bit more tidier and it's so much easier it took me maybe about half an hour to do this and i highly recommend it so let's get into it Okay, I'd first like to start off by apologizing to quite a lot of people that saw my first video that I put up um, regarding being able to power all your plug sockets in your caravan and use some appliances that um, obviously can work with your inverter depending on what size you've got. Um, that got viewed by over 1400 people and um, I had quite a few comments come back um, and I'm very thankful for the comments that I got back. Um, I wouldn't have known that what I was doing was illegal and that's why I took it off because I didn't want to put something out there that was illegal and I could be liable for. So thank you to those guys that um, basically notified me that um, what I was doing was incorrect. Um, I thought I was doing the correct thing. I actually went and sought professional advice by two auto electricians. Now, yes, I understand that auto electricians are only 12 volt and a professional electrician is basically 240 volts. So I should have basically seeked advice from both parties, which I didn't do. So just for you that maybe didn't see the first video, I just wanted to point out what I did and just to make sure that you don't do the same thing as me. So basically, what I did was I bought a 15 amp lead from Bunnings, um, which I basically plugged straight into my inverter, threaded it through the same as this yellow one right now, um, through the caravan and then brought it out behind the fridge and basically plugged it straight in. Um, I had a RCD, a residual current device that I bought from Bunnings as well, that was just here. Um, I'll try and pop that on the screen for you actually, just a little snap of what that setup was, um, which gave me some sort of safety, let's say. However, um, an RCD um, apparently isn't good enough for that particular setup that I had, and it was quite dangerous for me to do what I did, whereby my caravan potentially wasn't earthed correctly. Um, and if any voltage drop through any devices that I put in the plugs could potentially um, harm myself or even my family while we're in the caravan, which is obviously not a good thing. Um, so yeah, definitely just make sure um, you do the right thing. Now, a little disclaimer is that I am not an electrician, as you probably already know. Um, so please just do your own research, seek professional advice. I obviously thought I was seeking professional advice, but just make sure you speak to maybe a few more people than what I did. I just spoke to two auto electricians. Seek advice from a professional electrician as well. And anything further from here, I'm not gonna be responsible for any actions that anybody takes from watching this video. Your actions are your own responsibility. I'm just basically putting the video out there because I think that this is a very handy thing to do. However, I'm gonna show you the correct way how to do it this time. So any work that's done on 240 volts, electricity in your caravan needs to be signed off or done by a professional electrician. So just make sure you stick by the rules. That is the law. So I'd just like to explain the new extension lead that I've got. Now, this extension lead has got built into it. This big box here is called an RVD, which is a residual voltage device. Now this is Australian made and designed. I'll leave a link in the description for you. It's called rvdsafe.com.au. Um, this lead cost me $280. Um, but 
The good thing with that is that it is completely 100% legal now. So what I've done to power all my sockets and use any appliances in here that actually I can use from my inverter is completely and 100% safe, which is what you want. Now I'd also like to explain that what I've done suits my setup personally. This may not suit your setup that you've got. Now, if you haven't seen my recent video in regards to my setup, then please go back on to my other videos and you'll see one there regarding my lithium and solar setup on the roof. Um, I'll just quickly say that I've got 300 amp hours of batteries, lithium, and I've got 480 watts of solar on the roof. Um, my J35 hub here is basically obsolete. It does not have anything to do with my battery system. Um, if I need to charge up my batteries via 240 volts, um, I basically have a blue smart charger, which is this little um, device here, which basically charges my batteries up when I'm on 240 volts. And that's what this Lee is gonna do when I plug it in outside, it's gonna think that it's on 240 volts. However, I've got a isolation switch right here that I can switch that off. So all my batteries are being charged from are from the solar on the roof through the MPPT charger. So that's something to consider. Um, you just need to make sure that your setup suits what I've done and that you're able to basically um, isolate the batteries being charged from the mains because it's going to think that it's on the mains when you plug in this extension lead to the inlet of the caravan. Now I have a Victron Phoenix 12800 um, inverter. Now this basically is classed as 650 watts and peaks out at 1500 watts. So I'm only able to use my toaster, the washing machine. I can use my microwave, but it has to be at between 30 and 50% for it to actually be usable. I can't use it at 100% because my microwave is classed at 900 watts. So this is just not powerful enough for it. Um, we can charge up um, all my smart devices, um, which is my laptop. So I do a lot of editing when I do these videos and when I'm trying to charge my laptop up with a 12 volt charger, it's only charging at 2.1 amps, which is just not quick enough. Um, when I'm editing, it needs to render all my footage and it takes up a lot of battery life to do that and it just can't keep up. And that's why I need 240 volts to do that. Some people say, you know, when you're off grid, you're off grid, just use 12 volt. But unfortunately that just doesn't work for us. We're traveling around Australia, we're in the caravan permanently. I'm making these videos, Sarah's doing other stuff on her laptop. Sarah can't even actually charge her laptop up with a 12 volt charger. It has to be done by 240 volts. So we just can't rely on 12 volts. And that's why we made the choice to go to 240 volts by having this set up and putting in the inverter. However, I wanted to power up all the sockets in the caravan just because it's easier. Why would I just want to have an extension lead come from my inverter out into the caravan somewhere um, just so I can plug it in if I can use all the power sockets in the caravan? Yes, it's more expensive, but for us, it's more convenient to do it this way. Now, if you have already purchased a inverter yourself and it's already been put in your caravan, um, then and you want to have this setup that I've got, then I can only recommend that you do it this way by using the RBD lead. Now this lead was the 10 amp uh, plug, which goes through the RBD and then comes out at 15 amps to plug into my inlet of the caravan. I'll leave a link in the description below as to the one that I actually purchased, just in case you want to purchase the exact same one. Now I must just explain that my inverter is not powerful enough to use my aircon unit. I cannot use my air conditioning in my caravan. Like I explained earlier, I'm only able to use a certain amount of things inside the caravan. However, I can use every plug socket inside this caravan to plug in, obviously something that's not too of higher wattage. My wife can use her air straighteners. However, if I wanted to plug in a kettle, I can't even use a kettle because kettles are over 2000 watts. So my inverter is just not powerful enough. Now, I just want to mention that if you haven't 
purchased an inverter already and you're looking to buy one, um, I can certainly um, recommend after doing my research, after the fact, when I did all of this, that Enerdrive are currently doing a 2000 watt inverter, so pure sine wave inverter, and it comes with all the safety mechanisms inside the inverter itself. So you wouldn't need this RVD switch and lead. So you can actually purchase the inverters that are coming with all the safety mechanisms inside now with all the safety switches that you can use just in case there's any voltage drops electronically faulty inside the caravan. It's gonna flip that switch and make sure that no one gets hurt. So yeah, I'll leave a link in the description below for that. Um, however, the, you know, you're gonna be paying a lot more money. I think they only start at 2000 watts for the inverters with all the safety mechanisms inside. But I think you, you're gonna be paying around about a thousand to maybe 1300 bucks for that inverter, which I think personally is not a bad deal. Now we also found out that basically anybody that's got a generator and is powering their caravan with a generator, just doing the same, they basically put on their generator, stick it aside, get an extension, plug it straight into their inlet of their caravan. This is the same thing. Basically by doing that, it's an accident waiting to happen. So I'll leave a link in the description below of a video that RBD Safer put together. Basically it's two generators, two under generators, um, one with a RVD safe switch and one as bog standard. Um, they basically plug in a light bulb on an extension lead and put it into some water. And you'll see that basically the bog standard generator doesn't cut out. It basically just keeps on going. So potentially put in the whole van live if anything was to happen inside the caravan. It could potentially be a danger because the generator hasn't switched itself off. It's just continually going. And then basically they show the other generator with the RVD safe so switch on, put the same thing, put the light bulb in the water and it flicks off straight away. And that's the difference to keeping you and your family safe. Okay, so some other comments that I did get um, was people just saying, well, why would you even put an inverter in a caravan? You're just gonna drain your batteries flat. Well, I, I disagree with those comments. It obviously all depends on what sort of battery setup you've got. Now don't forget, I've got 300 amps of lithium battery here and 480 watts of solar on top. This is a pretty substantial setup that I've got. However, I'm not saying that having half of what I've got is still not gonna work, because I believe that it will. Now, I'm gonna show you how many volts is coming out of, let's say when I put the toaster on. Just remember when you're using those high power devices like a toaster, you're putting it on for maybe two or three minutes, depending on how many people you've got in the family as to how many times you're gonna be popping that toaster up and down. But it's not for 24 hours, it's not constant power that you're using. Um, so it's not gonna drain, and if it does drain down, it's gonna charge itself back up. But obviously that depends on your battery that you've got, a lithium, is a lot quicker at charging up than an AGM or a lead acid battery. So please consider that when you're looking into doing what I've done. If you've just got your normal AGM battery and your lead acid battery, I'm not saying that this is not gonna work, because it will, but it's certainly gonna drain your batteries a lot quicker, and it's still gonna take a lot longer for your batteries to come back up to their maximum capacity. So I'll just, I've got my notes just down here. I'll just read them to you about the RVD. This is what they claim on their website. They reject reverse polarity from mains connections and protect the use of generators and inverters plugged into all vehicles requiring 240 volt power where RCD, which is the residual current device protection, does not work. So that's what they're claiming and there probably is quite a bit of controversy out there as to what actually does and what actually doesn't work. Um, so that's, up, that's for you to look into, that's for you to do your research. I'm happy with the research that I've done and that's why I've gone for this system. All right, so I'll show you what I've done. So basically, the lead comes straight from my inverter. I've just got these nice sticky wire tabs here. 
keep it nice and neat. Run my way all the way through my caravan. It's basically come straight through here, gone through. This is under the bed, by the way, you probably already noticed. But basically it runs through the rear of the bed, comes through this cupboard down the bottom, and runs basically behind me along this skirt in here and goes um, underneath my L-shaped lounge and comes basically out at my, behind my fridge. Um, I'll take you outside and I'll show you what it looks like out there. Okay, I forgot to mention that um, if you're going to do it this way, there's a few things you're going to need to turn off prior to um, basically plugging it in, in the inlet outside. One, you're going to need to turn off your mains battery power. Whether you've got the J35 hub, I'm not sure how that would work, how you'd have to turn it off from that. If you've got like a separate um, 240 volt charger like I have, then I can basically just switch that off. Um, the second thing that you're going to need to switch off, your water heater element outside. Um, obviously it's going to be different in each van. Mine's in a Jayco Journey Outback, so my switch is outside. I'll show you that as we go outside as to where I switch that off. I turn the water heater element off, the water gets heated up from the gas. Um, and also, if you want to be on the safe side, I actually turned off the air conditioner. Um, and I also turned off the microwave just when I first initially did this, just to make sure that nothing was too powerful to stop the inverter from kicking in. Alrighty, so we're now outside. Um, so this is where my water heater element is. I'll just put you inside there, guys. Hopefully you can see the switch there, but that's on the off at the moment. And basically, um, like I said, the wire goes all the way behind my L-shaped lounge. And basically it comes out in my vent at the rear, uh, behind the fridge. Um, I've just placed a little hole just to allow for my 15 amp to come out and then basically plugs straight into my 240 volt inlet. So she's now on, she's now working. Let's go inside and let's see um, how much power we're going to be drawing. Let's see how much power we're going to be drawing from putting the toaster on, just so you can physically see. Right, so I've just switched on the toaster. Let's go over to the monitor. As you can see there, that's probably drawing nearly 800 watts. Sixty-one amps, pretty much. That it's drawing from that toaster alone. Ninety-nine point seven percent. So don't forget, guys. Like I mentioned before, that you're only going to be putting the toaster on. You could actually hear the inverter kicking in there, but you're only going to be putting the toaster on for two or three minutes at a time. So yes, your battery is going to go down, but it's not going to go down by a massive amount. So yeah, and then obviously, um, if you're on a nice sunny day, you're not even going to notice a difference. But yeah, just make sure you do your research, everyone, when you're fitting an inverter and what you actually want to power. Make sure that the batteries that you've got inside your caravan are substantial enough to do what you want to power inside the caravan. There's no use in having a 100 amp hour lead acid battery or AGM battery with a 3000 watt inverter on there and you're trying to power up your aircon. It's just not going to work. Your battery's going to go flat just like that. Do your research and get it right the first time. All right, guys, um, thanks for watching. I hope that was informative enough for you. So if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. There's going to be a lot more videos coming up. We're definitely going to be doing a walk around of the caravan um, very soon. So get some handy tips from that. And if you want to keep watching the videos and be notified, then press that notification button. All right, guys. Thanks again for watching. And we'll see you on the next one.